YouTube, what's going on? Welcome to the Off the Schneid 2020 NFL Preview Series, where I'll be going over all 32 NFL teams, breaking down their rosters, their schedule, giving you a record prediction, as well as helping out with some betting tips. If this is your first time at the channel, do me a massive favor, hit that like and subscribe button, turn on notifications, and uh, check the description for links to social media for Off the Schneid. Follow us on there as well. I want to give a massive shout out to our our lads scouting services and ourlads.com for helping me to make these uh these videos i'm on their website almost daily and if you're a serious football fan guys you need to be you need to have this uh this website bookmark favorited whatever it is helps me at draft time fantasy football purposes when creating bet slips as well as dfs lineups it's your one-stop shop for nfl scouting services uh, there's a link in the description for ourlads.com as well as the social media. Do me a favor again, hit that like and subscribe button. But enough of that, let's get to your favorite NFL football preview. All right, we're taking a look at the Washington Redskins. A um, lot to like about this team. We'll get to that. We'll start at the quarterback position. As always, we've got Dwayne Haskins. He's the guy. He has to be the guy. You have to throw him out there, you know, sink or swim. You got you got to do it. He's going to be the guy. He has to play all 16 games. You have to see where he's at and what you have with him. Um, he, he played uh, pretty pretty well last year considering, I thought. Um, I think seven touchdowns, seven interceptions. Um, played nine games, about half the season, basically. 1,300 yards, yeah, seven and seven. Uh, 100 yards rushing and uh, no rushing touchdowns. So you got to He's got to play. He's got to play every game. You got to see what you have. They brought in uh, Kyle Allen, who played with Ron Rivera last year, who should definitely be a capable backup. I think he's a fine backup. Um, you're definitely not super happy if he's starting games. If I'm being honest, uh, they got Steven Montez, who I don't think should ever play a snap in the NFL, if I'm being perfectly honest. I just don't think so. And um, my guy, Alex Smith, man, I really like, I really, really am rooting extremely. I really hope that we see Alex Smith play, even if it's in preseason. Not not this season, maybe not, but at some point, I would just love to see Alex Smith play football again. Um, the dude almost died, man. He almost died because of that leg injury. He's had, he had 17 surgeries. He almost had to have his leg amputated. He almost died. It was life-threatening. This is real stuff, man. And he is, oh my God, it's super inspirational, man. Super inspirational to see everything that this guy has done. And I just, I even if it, like I said, even if it's just preseason football, I would love to see Alex Smith play football in the NFL again. Absolutely. That would be the greatest comeback story probably in the history of football, in my opinion. Um, so that's your quarterback situation. Again, Dwayne Haskins is your guy. That's it. You got to start him 16 games and see what you have. Um, running back situation is, is an interesting one. You still got AP who's one of the greatest running backs of all time. Uh, but he's definitely getting up there. I think he's 33, 34, um, definitely getting up there in age. And, uh, I'm sure he wants to keep playing as long as he can, but realistically, how long do you want to have him as kind of 35? How long do you want to have him as your starting running back? I mean, it's a very good possibility that this is his last season, you know, playing at that level. You know where he's getting you know 800 yards four plus yards per carry type of a thing um he could keep playing like frank gore frank gore is still going um i'm not saying he can't be a contributor and he can't keep playing but i'm not sure you want to rely on him to tote the rock you know 250 times i really don't think you want to rely on that uh darius geis or bryce love one of those two guys has to stay healthy for me and uh and uh be able to get back to their kind of more or less college days darius guys we've seen glimpses but again uh injuries have been an issue for darius so I, th I think he could be an nfl running back it's just a matter of if he can stay on the field kind of a thing um Peyton Barber, they went out and grabbed from Tampa Bay, who's had some experience starting. Uh, J.D. McKissick, Josh Josh Ferguson, they have a lot of experience and a lot of guys that that you know you could could do the job, but no one that you're super duper excited about, to be honest with you. Unless unless Bryce Love um, ends up being the guy and uh, gets back to his college days, because he was a he was a beast at I believe Stanford, just off the top of my head uh yeah stanford so he was a beast there but um 
Right now, it looks like AP and Geis and, you know, uh, Antonio Gibson will probably be taking over for Chris Thompson and passing downs. I really didn't love that Antonio Gibson draft pick, if I'm being honest. I think that they have some guys on this team that can do a lot of the same things. Steven Sims is that guy that I think can do a lot of the same things. Um, maybe not run the ball as well, obviously, but uh, he can catch the ball out of the backfield. And they did have some plays like that for him last year. And he did run the ball a bit last year. He's a guy that I absolutely really like. Um, the tight end position is definitely a point of weakness. They paid uh, Logan Thomas some money. Um, and then they got uh, Thaddeus Moss in undrafted free agency because they were the first team that contacted his agent after the draft. And uh, he can he can definitely play. I, I thought he should have been drafted, but either way. Um, but Jeremy Sprinkle, Richard Rogers, I mean, you know, Hale H H H Hedges Henges. He was he was okay for them in in spurts last year. Um, but again, nothing like screaming, jumping out, then beating down the door, you know. And then the offensive line, a little bit weak as well. Um, as far as uh, sacks allowed, they're in the bottom five. They allowed 50 sacks last year. That obviously cannot continue, but it likely will. Um, Cornelius Lucas, uh, uh, Chase Rullier, mm, Moses, Moses Morgan. Uh, Morgan Moses, sorry, I'm not you know screaming about that. It's definitely a point of weakness. Still, they didn't really address it much in the draft. They got uh, Sadiq Charles, who I do like from LSU, and uh, Keith Ishmael, who I do like as well. Um, but those guys aren't something you want to rely on this season, that's for sure. So that's definitely another point of weakness. Basically, this whole offense is just too weak to to really compete this season. But that might not necessarily be a bad thing, which I'll kind of get to. Um, as far as wide receivers are concerned, I definitely like what they have to work with. And uh, I, I definitely like a lot of the guys that they have. Scary Terry, I really like. Um, uh, Dwayne Haskins' teammate in uh, college at Ohio State. Kelvin Harmon, I really like. Um, Steven Sims, I really like. I think he can do a lot of good things. He's like a poor man's Tyree Kill right now. Um, and he, he could be, you know, 800, yard, 800 uh, yards receiving, you know, six touchdown type of a guy. I think out of the slot, I think he starts over Trey Quinn. That's my opinion on it. I would go with Steven Sims. I think he can do more and he's more athletic and more explosive, faster. Um, I, I like Cam Sims. I really like Antonio Gandy-Golden. So I think they're just fine for the immediate and long-term future at wide receiver. I think they're just fine with what they have right now, personally. Um, but they got to do something about that offensive line, and they got to add uh, some tight end weapons and some running back uh, depth. That Well, they have tons of depth, but they have no real, like, you know, knock your socks off kind of running back. So that's your offense. Scott Turner, new offensive coordinator. Um, North Turner's son, I believe. Um, he's going to have his work cut out for him a little bit. This team is uh, definitely a defensive team. So we'll move over to the defensive side of the ball. New head coach, Ron Rivera, who I absolutely love. He's a fantastic coach, in my opinion. Very good leader. And uh, Jack Del Rio as well. Super experienced. Been around the league forever. Former head coach. Defensively, this team is going to be just fine. Just fine. And that is what you build around moving forward. I think that they could be a couple years from being a really good team, a really good team, probably two years away, as long as Dwayne Haskins is, is you know, at least a capable quarterback, which I think he definitely will be. Um, but again, defensively, whew, scary team, man, scary team. Um, defensive line, Jonathan Allen, Ron Payne, Matt Adonis, Ryan Anderson, Montez Sweat, Ryan Kerrigan, Chase Young now. That's a scary team. There's a real potential that the, this team leads the NFL in sacks. There's a real potential for that to happen this season. Um, there's not a hole there, in my opinion. There's zero holes on their defensive line and, and all of their pass rushers getting after the quarterback, even stopping the run. They should be just fine on defense. I'll say it over and over again. Um, linebackers are okay. It's a touch of a weakness there. Uh, Thomas Davis is definitely getting up there in age, but he's a fantastic leader. And um, that's exactly why they you know, played for Ron Rivera for years. That's exactly what they brought him in to be, is just a leader of this young defense, young, good, talented defense. 
Um, Kelly Holcomb, I think, is fine. Or sorry, Cole Holcomb. Kelly Holcomb, the former quarterback. But uh, Cole Holcomb should be just fine. John Bostic is is capable. Ruben Foster's there. Um, we're not really sure where he's at. But um, again, they have some pieces where they're just fine on defense. And then on the back end, they shine, signed um, Sean Davis from the Steelers. They got Landon Collins there, who's one of the better uh, safeties in the NFL. Uh, Kendall Fuller from the Chiefs, who is really good. Baby Amoro is fantastic. Ronald Darby, they signed. They brought, I think they brought back Aaron Colvin. Um, Jimmy Moreland, Craig Stroman, even. Like they're, they're looking really good on defense. Really good on defense. Um, it's just they're in special teams too, even, but man it's gonna be it's just gonna be tough for them to score points like their defense is just not gonna be able to stop like the cowboys for instance and the eagles they're not gonna be able to stop them when their defense or their offense can't keep up you know i mean the, uh, to me this is one of the better defensive units in the league i love the redskins defense i really really do but week in and week out they can't win you games like every single week you know not at the clip that they're going to need them to with the offense being so weak. Um, tons to build around with this team. Tons to build off of. Build off of the defense. Continue to have that be your kind of cornerstone. Um, work on that offensive line. And then uh, they're going to be a competitive team in a couple of years. I really think so. So there you go. There's, there's your breakdown of the roster. Let's take a look at uh, the prediction and the schedule breakdown for the Redskins. All right, there you go. We got the low high my for the Washington Redskins. 13 to one on your money for them to win the division. That might be a little bit generous. Like I said, it's just not, they're, they're not gonna compete to win this division. I'm sorry, they're, they're not. Um, offensively, they're just not there. But give them a couple years, uh, everybody takes a step forward, they add some pieces on that offensive line, and then I like their potential in, in a couple years. They finished 3-13 thir and 13 last season. That's what I have kind of on the low end. It's very, again, it's possible because their offense is just not there. The, the defense will absolutely be able to keep them in a ton of games, especially in, in uh, games against like the Steelers and you know Panthers, stuff like that. So I think they can definitely pick up some wins. Um, Seven and nine on the high side, I think a lot would have to go right for them. To be honest, I don't expect them to be a winning team. And I was kind of touching on it earlier. You know, if you're a bad team this year, if you're the Redskins and you're you're the worst team in the league, if I'm a Redskins fan, I might not be upset with that at all. To be honest with you, that might be a win. If you're first overall selection with this defense that they have, you know, and uh, they're maybe able to add a couple more draft picks and some more draft capital into next year's draft. That might be a very good thing for this team, to be honest with you. Even if even if Dwayne Haskins is still the guy, which he likely wouldn't be if they're first overall next season, Trevor Lawrence will be on the Redskins. Um, but again, that might not be the worst thing if you're a Redskins fan. You might not be upset with that. I'm just saying, you know, I'm a Bengals fan. I, I was not upset with them being first overall selection. So it sets your team up to be, you know, especially when you're not that far away. I don't think the Bengals are a bad team. And I think they'll have a probably uh, a winning season this year. I could see the potential of that happening for the Redskins as well if they were that bad. And it's, to be honest with you, it's possible that they are the worst team in the NFL. Um, I'm not sure if they will be or not. But again, it might not be the worst thing if they are, if you're a Redskins fan. Uh, so let's get into their schedule. Week one against the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles have to win that game if they want to be a playoff team. I think that they probably do get that win, even though it's in Washington. Um, uh, the, the defense won't be able to steal games that early in the season, I don't think, especially against a really good team like the Eagles. On the road against Arizona, I like the cards. They're a better team this year. Their defense is, is very capable and uh, could be very similar to this team, uh, to the Redskins. So I don't suspect, and their offense is just much, much better. So I expect the Cardinals to probably get that win. On the road against the Browns, I like the Browns there as well. Um, the Browns, to me, are a playoff team. Uh, the Eagles are a playoff team. The Ravens are a playoff team. The Cowboys are a playoff team. You know, like uh, their first win might not come until they play the Rams at home. I could see them definitely having a good shot to beat the Rams. I don't really like the Rams this year at all. And this Redskins defense is legit. So I, I think they got a reasonable shot to beat the Rams at home in week five. And that might be their first win. 
on the road against the Giants. I think all around the Giants are a better team overall. Um, the the Redskins defense I like more, but again that offense is just gonna it's gonna handcuff them a little bit, and it's gonna be a common thing throughout the season. Um, there might be some frustration there on the defensive side of the ball when they're doing all the you know all the work. Um, then at home against Dallas, I like Dallas to win that game. Uh, they're a playoff team, division contender. Yeah, if you're the Cowboys and the Eagles, you have to beat the Redskins both games. It's just how it's kind of get, it has to go. If you're a playoff team, you have to beat the Redskins home or away. It doesn't matter. Uh, bye week eight. I wouldn't mind an earlier bye week if I'm the Redskins. If I'm a team built like the Redskins and I'm young and uh, kind of inexperienced, a young quarterback, I'd rather have a bye week earlier so I can kind of catch my breath and uh, watch some tape and figure some things out. But I mean, it is what it is. It's not that late. Um, yeah, you can't really do much about it. Come back off the bye. They play the New York Giants at home. They probably split with the Giants. Um, so I, I think they got a good shot to win that game for sure. Um, the Giants are a team that they could definitely split with. At Detroit, um, it's going to depend on if, if Matt Stafford is fine and healthy. I think the Lions definitely get that win. Um, and then at home against my Bengals, at that point in the season, I think the Bengals will be a better team overall than the than the the Redskins. Defensively, the Redskins are better. Offensively, the Bengals are going to be better, in my opinion. Um, it is in Washington, so I give them a good shot to win that game. I mean, that one is, is another kind of coin flip for me. Um, even though it is my team, I'm obviously going to be you know rooting for them and everything like that. But um, the Redskins are a very very good defense. And uh, they they should be able to keep up, and it should be a close game, um, and one that's that's winnable. At Dallas, I don't like their chances there. I think uh, Dallas definitely gets the win at home, and then at Pittsburgh, these teams are very very similar to me. But the Steelers' offense is better than the Redskins' defense. Uh, offense, sorry, the defenses are very close, and they might just wash each other out. To be honest, but I I do trust the Steelers' offense a little more than the Redskins this season. Even though I'm not really high on the on the Steelers at all this season, but even still, I think that they could they get that win. Um, especially at home like the Steelers are going to get that win then at San Francisco I don't give them much of a shot to be honest with you the the 49ers are one of the better teams in the league and uh they're playing at home across the country that's a tough game I think uh I think they get that win uh at home against Seattle that's again I, I don't think they beat the Seahawks that these are teams that that are you know they have to beat teams like the Redskins so uh, you can kind of see where I'm getting my projection and how I can, you know, I have them winning five games. I have them improving from last season, but not exponentially. And then at home against the Panthers, I definitely think they get that win. Not only Ron Rivera, like they're, 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 uh, the, the, I think the Panthers are going to have a hard time stopping teams on defense and the Redskins are not. So even with their, I, I like the Panthers offense better for sure with McCaffrey, obviously, and, and even Teddy and DJ Moore. But um, I think defensively, they're going to be able to hang in there and keep them in the game at home. You know, it, I mean, it depends if you're really hoping you're tanking for Trevor Lawrence, you don't want to win that game. But I mean, I, I think that that's absolutely a winnable game for the Redskins. Absolutely. And then uh, week 17 on the road against Philly, they could win that game if Philly is start uh, sitting all their starters. If they're resting their starters, they're locked into their playoff spot, whatever it is, the, the, the Redskins might have a chance to win that game just because they're playing against some backups. So... Yeah, I mean, you can see where I'm going at with this. If the defense just plays lights out and and uh, Haskins takes a huge leap forward, I could see them at seven and nine. It's possible, not super likely. Again, the low and mine are are a lot more aligned um, to kind of pull them back a bit. But I don't think the Redskins are far off. And if I'm a Redskins fan, I'm extremely excited about about the potential for my team moving forward. And I absolutely love my defense and uh, love my new coach. There's a lot to like with the Redskins, but they're just a couple years away in my opinion. And uh, and we'll see, but um, there you go. Yeah, there's your projection for the uh, the 2020 Washington Redskins.